Hello, we are the SpaceX fans and welcome to the SpaceX show, the place where you can stay up to date with everything SpaceX. There's an article related to Starlink which says SpaceX is leasing a 124,907 square foot building complex that's under construction in Redmond Ridge Business Park east of Seattle. Apparently the new building is just a block away from SpaceX's existing facilities at Redmond Ridge. Those facilities serve as the headquarters for SpaceX's Starlink satellite development and manufacturing operation. In another article, SpaceX narrowly missed a collision with another satellite. It says two satellites from the fast-growing constellations of OneWeb and SpaceX's Starlink dodged a dangerously close approach with one another in orbit last weekend, representatives from the US Space Force and OneWeb said. Eric Berger posted a tweet saying 2021 orbital launches by US companies SpaceX 10, Rocket Lab 2, Northrop Grumman 1 and Virgin Orbit 1. Musk responded with global payload to orbit is the key metric. Musk was asked any news or pictures of the new A Shortfall of Gravitas drone ship. He said coming soon crazy number of launches this year. There was a tweet about a Falcon 9 booster landing. It says, if I saw this in a movie, I would think, neat in concept, but it would never work. Absolutely genius engineering, SpaceX is literally turning science fiction into reality. Musk tweeted a response of, Starship Booster, largest flying object ever designed will be caught out of sky by launch tower. Big step forward as reflight can be done in under an hour. In response, he was asked, what about the Starship itself, landing legs or catching with tower as well? Musk responded with, ideal scenario in my opinion is catching Starship in horizontal glide with no landing burn although that is quite a challenge for the tower. Next best is catching with tower with emergency landing mode on skirt, no legs. He was also asked, okay but what about for Mars where there is no tower? Musk said, needs legs for moon and Mars. Somebody tweeted about an FAA filing confirming SpaceX is building a launch catch tower for super heavy boosters. Musk responded with just one skyscraper catching another, no big deal. Musk was also asked how do you plan on doing that by the grid fins? He said loading points just below the grid fins. Musk tweeted a response to that with shock absorption is built into tower arms. Since tower is ground side it can use a lot more mass to arrest booster downward momentum. Musk posted yet another tweet saying the Starship launch tower that catches the giant rocket booster is basically Mechazilla. Plus, just needs some legs. Here's a view of the orbital launch site tank farm infrastructure. Here's the hardware currently being constructed in the production yard for the orbital launch mount. There's an article about a YouTuber who went to Boca Chica and trespassed at the launch site to film SN11. This is not acceptable, so if you're going to visit the site, please don't go trespassing on SpaceX land. Apparently, SpaceX has been informed of this situation and I wanted to share this article. There's a pretty cool diagram created by the ring watchers of the production area of SpaceX's facility. It gives an overview of the main things currently going on around the yard. Somebody posted a picture in a tweet where they said, Starship with a full tile set. Augmented reality by editing my render onto a pic by Boca Chica Girl looks so surreal. A new dome has been sleeved in the yard. There's a new lower booster bulkhead with a lot of engine mounts. A new nose cone has been spotted out in the yard. An interesting new cap was added to the blunt nose cone. On the left is the new ground support equipment tank GSE-2 I believe. On Thursday the Starship SM-15 prototype was rolled out to the launch area. It was then lifted onto the suborbital pad A mount. With SM15 now rolled out, somebody posted this cool timeline of each vehicle from rollout to launch on his website. There was a tweet posted saying, SpaceX has requested to operate a single Starlink terminal on the ground or during test flights, max 12.5 kilometers or eight minutes. Also, a new white dish has been spotted on SM15. Looking at the road and beach closures on the Cameron County website, there is a closure for tomorrow and Tuesday. So, as soon as tomorrow, we could see a cryogenic proof test at least. The upper dome for the first orbital starship serial number 20 has been seen sitting outside. I believe this is the super heavy booster number 2 upper dome that's waiting to be sleeved. 
I'm pretty sure it's now been sleeved. We can't finish our Sunday video without taking a look at the latest Starship and Super Heavy build diagram thanks to Brendan Lewis. We also have to thank Mary known as Boca Chica Girl who is out there non-stop filming the awesome footage. Also thank you to the NASA Spaceflight team which is a great team putting together awesome videos, live streams and other space content. That's it for this episode of the SpaceX show, I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did make sure to hit the like button and leave a comment down below. If you want to stay updated with SpaceX info make sure to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified when I upload. Thanks for watching and have a great day.